a title sequence with geometric designs showing a collage of shots of women with disability in everyday situations and someone dialing 1800 Respect on a mobile phone. Film title, Early Intervention in Domestic and Family Violence. Produced by Women with Disabilities Victoria. A content warning. This film includes scenes of abuse, neglect and violence towards people with a disability. If you feel upset, support is available. Contact 1800 Respect for confidential support on 1800 737 732 or online chat at www.chat.1800respect.org.au forward slash hashtag forward slash welcome. Film presenters Ross Only Zirkel and Jessica Cochran, both disability advocates, are sitting in a room. Ross uses Auslan. It's important to understand what family violence is so you can recognise early warning signs and take action. Warning signs can include subtle or repeated patterns of control or coercion. Loss of power and control increases the risk of family violence. Cut away of a young woman in a wheelchair entering a living room to talk to her parents. It can be hard to recognise and challenge a pattern of control or abuse if you don't know your rights and you don't have the power to make your own decisions. Early intervention can include supporting people to understand their rights, providing information, or linking people to education or empowerment programs, advocacy or peer support groups, In a modern kitchen, support worker Fee gives Charlotte, a young woman in a wheelchair, a cup of tea. There you go. Charlotte is on her phone and seems withdrawn. Charlotte, are you okay? Charlotte? My parents and I had another fight. Oh, that's no good. Do you want to talk about it? I think they're just having trouble giving me more independence. It's really frustrating. I'm really worried about them, actually. Yeah, it's a hard time for you all. What do you fight about? Everything. I mean, I'm not six years old anymore. I just feel really alone all the time and Mum and Dad are making it so much worse. What do you mean? Well, they want to know where I'm going, what I'm doing, who I'm doing it with. They won't even give me keys to my own house and they want to know everything I'm spending. Really? It's getting ridiculous. They want to take me to every appointment and I'm starting to believe I won't be able to ever do it on my own. Yeah, that's hard. It doesn't matter, Fee. I don't have a choice. Why is that? Mum said they need to be across all my care and medications. Ignore me. They probably just love me and want to do the best by me. Yeah, I'm sure they do. And it sounds like they might need some support as well. I'm wondering if there's anything else I can do to support you. I just want to be more independent, really. Of course. How do you want to make it happen? By hanging out with my friends and going to my appointments on my own. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, actually. Okay. Maybe this time you can come and next time I'll go on my own. Okay, great. Charlotte's parents are sitting at the living room table going over some bills. And I can get to that next month. But that's 147. Yeah, but I can't do anything about that right now. Charlotte and Fee enter the room. Mum, Dad, I'm going out tomorrow. Where? Doctor's appointment and I want Fee to come with me. We'll come with you, honey. Charlotte's father looks frustrated and angry. No. I want you guys to stay home and rest. Fee can come. But what if something happens? What if you forget something? She forgets everything. Charlotte, were you wanting to say something? I want to do this on my own. What if you don't remember what the doctor tells you? You don't know what it's like. Dad. What 
about this later, okay? Reflection questions on screen. What's happening in this scenario? How do you think Charlotte is feeling? Can you spot any early warning signs in this scenario? A series of interviews in a simple house setting. Jack Dexter, a disability advocate. I think Charlotte's feeling like she can't win with her life, like she wants to be able to do everything, but her parents are sort of like holding her back. Ferris, a disability advocate. If someone tries to treat you as a child when you are an adult, you don't actually get to develop other areas of being an adult. You don't get to understand choices and consequences and learn from mistakes. I think maybe that her parents need to have trust in their daughter to make her own decisions. Colleen Pearce, the Victorian public advocate. There is no doubt that Charlotte's parents care for her and I'm sure they feel they're acting in her best interests. But best interest is the old paradigm. Um, we now, um, with the UN Convention on the Rights of People with a Disability, we talk about supported decision making. Hannah Riki, a support worker. I think Fee responds in a really great way. Um, it's a way that supports Charlotte, but it isn't confrontational um, to the parents. It's not advocating on behalf of Charlotte, it's supporting Charlotte to advocate for herself. So. One of the things that the worker can do is to assist the parents understand what supported decision making is and how they can move away from trying to act in the best interests of their daughter, but act in a way that is far more empowering. Inez Kerry from 1800 Respect. When someone's experiencing domestic and family violence, they're living with a level of fear. Um, rights have been taken away from them. Um, and we know that it's about power and control. That can look like anxiousness. Um, it can look like sadness and depression. It can be fluctuations in mood or changes in behaviour. Fee could support Charlotte to understand her rights by um, taking her to advocacy meetings, um, providing her with information on um, uh, how to become more independent, learning new skills. Miranda Dara, a support worker. More so definitely inform your management and seek support on uh, what resources that you can give Charlotte as well. We always want to talk about people's right to feel safe. So asking things like, I noticed that you said this the other day, are you worried about any of your relationships? I think the importance of educating yourself on what family violence is and how it's not just physical violence, educating yourself on the rights of persons with disabilities, the various types of abuse that there are, so that you're able to really identify um, abuse that you might not be aware of. So it's important that you've worked with your supports around you, professionally and personally, to know what your self-care strategies are, whether that's exercise or cooking or eating or meditation, um, or just doing something light and gentle, you know, with friends and family members or your colleagues. Titles on the closing screens. 1800 Respect provides support to anyone impacted by violence, including frontline workers who might want to debrief or seek a secondary consultation in relation to domestic and family violence. Call 1800 737 732 or chat online at www.chat.1800respect.org.au forward slash hashtag forward slash welcome. More text on screen. The Men's Referral Service provides advice for workers supporting clients who use violence and support for men who are using controlling behaviour towards a partner or family member. Call 1300 766 491 or chat online at www.ntv.org.au forward slash get help forward slash about the men's referral service. This video was produced by Women with Disabilities Victoria in partnership with National Disability Services with the support of the Victorian Government.